Good morning and welcome to Granny's Country Cooking. This is our new member of our wonderful household. Her name is Bella Sue. She is two months old and she's a brand new baby in our household and we love her so much. I just wanted to introduce you to her. I'm Granny and this is Bella Sue and she will be down for her nap in just a minute and I will be right back. Thank you. Tell them bye, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Welcome to Granny's Country Cooking, and I am Granny. And as a few minutes ago, you got to meet our newest member of our family, Bella Sue. She's a, a two-month-old Boston Terrier puppy, and you may hear her in the background, but don't worry. She's okay. But today we're going to have so much fun. We're going to be making roast potatoes, carrots, and gravy all in the same pan. I can't wait to show you how to do this. It is so easy and so fun. This recipe comes from my grandmother from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. She taught my mother how to cook this and it has been a wonderful blessing through our family. What we're going to do is choose the size pans that we're going to do first. Now, if you have a smaller family or there's you by yourself or you and your husband, you might want to go with a smaller size. This is the small, medium, and large. This is the smaller size. This is the medium, as you can see. And then this one is the large size. Now this large size is what I use to make for a big family gathering uh, with lots of people. And I may have two roasts in this large size pan so that there will be plenty of food for everyone. In the medium size, it might be a larger roast. Today we're going to use a three pound roast and it's going to go in the smaller size. Even though it's pretty big, we're still going to use the smaller size. Now, this size here, the large pan, I would put maybe two three-pounders or maybe one larger six-pound roast, something like this. And there are different kinds of roast meat. There's the ones that are tall that are called rump roasts. There's some that are called arm roasts. There's all different kinds of roasts. There's some with the bone in and some without the bone. So today, the roast we're going to use is without the bone, and it is considered a shoulder roast. You can use whatever size. Now, what I like to do, we live way out in the country, so I like to get two or three pieces maybe on sale of meat put them in the deep freeze, and then I bring them out whenever we're wanting to eat something like that. So we're going to put the medium size, the large size away, and then we're going to get started in fixing the roast. So I will be right back with you. Okay, now we're back. There, before we get started doing the actual cooking, I want to remind everyone that whenever my grandkids or anyone is helping me cook in the kitchen, there's a few rules that we go by. We put our hair back or up, we wash our hands really, really good, and we put an apron on. If y'all remember, just a little while ago, I was holding my puppy and introducing her to you, and sometimes little puppy fur baby's hair will get on your clothes. If you put an apron on and wash your hands really good, you won't have to worry about that into the food. But you can also play in the food and not worry about messing up your clothes. It's more fun to have an apron on. You can just relax and enjoy it. Now the first step that we're going to do is we're going to season the meat. Then we're going to brown it in the pan. Now first we're going to pick the meat up. This is a three pound roast. And it does not have the bone in it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put salt, pepper, and sugar. That's very unusual, but if you try it once, you're going to love it. It gives more of a sugar-cured taste for the roast. Now, I use only sea salt 
in all of my cooking. Plus, I only use the the uh, pepper little ball things in there, the little peppercorns, and I put it in a grinder, and it gives a better flavor. You don't have to use as much, but it gives a better flavor for the meat. So let's start off with the pepper. Now we're going to do both sides with all of our seasoning. We're going to get a really good dose of this pepper. It is pretty strong, but after it cooks for many hours, it's going to be okay. The sea salt, we're going to put a pretty good amount of that on there. Now we're going to get sugar. And the sugar doesn't taste in the food after it's cooked. It just makes all of the delicious flavors blend together better. I found that out from a lot of the frontier women. They put just maybe a half a teaspoon of sugar in vegetables, in meats, in soups, and it makes all the flavor blend together better. Now we're going to put this on the meat itself. So we're going to sprinkle it. It's not a tremendous amount. This is an eighth of a cup, and I've used about half of it, so it's not a lot. Now our fingers will be clean, of course. We're going to wet our fingers. Now with little wet fingers, we're going to rub all of this seasoning into the meat to kind of get it inside of that meat there so that it will really, really, really be flavored good and it will soak down into the meat really, really good. Now while you are doing this, you will have your oven on at 200. And the reason why, it's a low, slow cook. And it makes the meat extra, extra tender. Now usually, I put this on at night time before I go to bed. The oven is at 200. Put the roast in and let it cook all night long. Or if you're working at a job and you feel comfortable uh, leaving your oven on during the day, you can put this on early in the morning. And then at the end of the day, when you come home, take it out of the oven and go ahead and make the gravy. We'll be doing that in a minute. Add your potatoes and carrots. Put it back in the oven for a short time and you have delicious roast. So we're smoothing this in, and as you can tell, it's taking a few minutes, but what's happening is the sugar is kind of melting, blending, the sauce is melting, and the, the pepper is going down into there, into the meat. That's what you want. You want a nice semi-wet where it's kind of making a little glaze on there. Okay. Now what we're going to do, we're going to rinse our hands, we're going to put flour on. Now we're going to sprinkle the flour. I have, it's just regular flour. We're going to sprinkle it. And if you notice, I have a cookie sheet and I have the clear wrap inside the cookie sheet. And the reason for that is it just makes a quicker cleanup. It's not as hard to clean up, but it is very, very worth it when you taste this roast. Now, yes, there are millions of recipes for roast, and I know every one of them are delicious. But maybe you'll like to try this one and see how it tastes to you, and you may want to carry on the tradition. My family is always talking about, oh, Granny's, a uh, famous roast. Well, you're getting to learn how to make it. My grandkids are watching the videos, and if they don't have a chance to come visit, they can still learn how to make Granny's roast, and I love that. Okay, now we're letting that soak in the sides really, really good, but we also want to do the other side. Okay, now we are kind of shaking that off a little bit. And we're turning it over. The other side is very, very wet, which is good. Let's rinse our hands.
And as you can tell, it's kind of comical, Bella Sue is serenading us right now. So I'm glad you got to meet her and get to hear her. And Mama doesn't let her in the kitchen because I could trip over her while I'm doing this cooking. So we're going to have to let her serenade us for just a little bit. Now we're putting the pepper, we're putting sea salt, we're going to put sugar, about half of an eighth of a cup, okay? We're going to sprinkle that on. We're going to get our fingers wet. Remember, clean hands always. Now we're going to rub that in until the sugar melts and blends in, and the salt. That's what you want, is you want it to blend in very much. And you keep smushing it in, smashing, rubbing, gently letting it soak into the meat, and it really, really does make a difference. This roast is absolutely delicious. Now, if you're a one person, or if there are two of you, what you can do is you can have, uh, I like to cook maybe a bigger amount for my husband and I, and then have several meals out of it. Also, if you're a one person by yourself, you can take this roast and have the divided plates. You can put portions of your food, gravy, potatoes, carrots, everything in there, and then cover it very well and put it in the freezer. And you have got your own, what they call, TV dinners, but it's very, very healthy food. Plus, you can take that to work, and everyone at your work will be having a fit because they will be smelling your food. And it will be delicious. Be a lot better than a hamburger, even though those are good. Okay, now the sugar and the salt are kind of turning into a glaze, and they are getting shiny. That's what we want. We're letting it kind of melt, kind of get soaked in to the meat really good. You can mash it, kind of rub it in really, 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 really good. You will not believe the taste. One time I overheard two of my granddaughters talking and they were sitting eating this roast and potatoes and carrots. And one of them said, oh man, this is good. And the other granddaughter said, no, it's not good. It is delicious. So I hope your family will have fun eating your delicious roast. Okay, rinse hands. And now we're going to sprinkle our flour on. I'm so excited about having these YouTube videos. Uh, as you can imagine, because I love to cook, I buy large amounts of flour and sugar and baking powder and soda and all the stuff. Well, many through many years now, I have had so many checkers at the stores uh, say to me, why are you buying 25 pounds of flour and 25 pounds of sugar? What are you going to do with this? And I laugh and I tell them, well, I cook. And what I do is I make biscuits and pies and cakes and cookies and breads, homemade breads. And I love to have a supply because we live out in the country. We can't just drop everything and go to the store to get milk, or we can't just drop and may not have forgotten the eggs. You can't just drop and go to town and get the eggs. It just doesn't work that way when you live in the country. So you have to be prepared, and I love to buy the bulk of that. All right, this is ready. Both sides are ready. So what we are going to do is we're going to pause for a minute and move the camera over to the stove and I'll show you how we're going to cook it, kind of broil it on both sides or kind of fry it a little bit on both sides. So we're going to get that ready in just a minute. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Okay, we are back. 
and we are going to be browning the roast on both sides. And what I did was I using this size pan and I put about maybe an inch of corn oil. I like to cook with corn oil because it does not have a heavy taste to it. It does not too thick and it's, uh, it's healthy. It doesn't have all the cholesterol. So I use the corn oil to do most of my cooking, almost everything I guess. And so I'm going to let this oil get pretty hot. You have to be very, very careful. I have plopped the meat, it's falling in here accidentally, burned myself, so please be careful. Now, the way we find out if the oil is ready to put the meat in is that you sprinkle some flour in, and if it doesn't sizzle, then you wait a little while and let it get hotter. Now, I have the burner on probably about a medium. I have used of uh, the electric stoves, I have used gas stoves, and I think personally I like the gas stove because I can watch the size of the fire, the burner, and with electric stove it's a little harder to tell whether it's on low or medium or high, you know, it's on bright red. But I kind of like the gas stove, so whatever stove you have, you can still do this. I do have the oven heated at 200. Now, like I said a while ago, you can cook it all night long and or you can start it in the morning if you don't mind leaving your stove on and you can cook it during the day while you're at work and then the evening when you come home, you can take it out, add your flour and seasonings to make the gravy, add your potatoes and carrots, put it back in the oven for a little while absolutely delicious. So we're going to take all the steps together. This is going to be a during the daytime cook. So that normally I put it on at night time. So let's check this oil again to see if it's going to sizzle a little bit. Almost. It's getting there almost. And as you can see, our roast is, is soaking in all the good flavors here. And you don't have to have a real, real thick amount of flour. You can add a little more if it's soaked in. Remember, clean hands. I'm going to add a little bit more flour, kind of rub it in. Now what I'm going to do is put this side over in the pan and then add a little more flour to the underside in case it's soaked in a little bit. So we're going to get that. And what we're doing is we're kind of cooking, searing is the word, searing those flavors into the meat and then while it's in the oven it'll have all of that good crunchy as well as the seasoning in there. Okay, let's try the flour again. And it's getting close. Not quite. Okay. It's getting there. I'll turn the burner up just a tad. And check it to see if it's getting there. You don't want to put the meat into semi-cool oil. It just soaks into the meat and it's yeah, yucky. So what you want to do is to have it sizzling. Not exploding hot but sizzling so that it starts cooking immediately and not soaks in. A lot of times when you're making potatoes or french fries or, or whatever, uh, if your oil isn't the right temperature, it's going to soak into those potatoes and it's not very good. Okay, we're going to try it again. Now, if you can see it's starting to sizzle, sizzle a little bit and that's getting better. We want to try for just a minute more and get it kind of, of oily. Now after we brown the roast on both sides, we're not going to keep the oil. We're going to pour the oil off. Then we're going to add water so that it can cook in that. I don't like to keep the oil in there. It makes a real look. A greasy type of gravy and we don't want that. So we're just going to pour it off after we brown 
So, ah, oh, perfect. It's really sizzling now. Okay. This is where you have to be very, very, very careful. I have burned myself. So please be careful. If you're a new cook, you want to be careful. Now, do you see that it is bubbling in there? That's what you want. You want it to cook it really good. Now, the oil is a little bit high, so I'm just going to add a little bit more flour to that part right there. And be careful of my hands. I'm going to rinse my hands off and let it brown. And while it's browning in there, we're going to take this and do a little cleanup. Look how nice it's going to be. It's not going to be really, really bad at all. And we're going to put this into the trash while wow, that is cooking, and look at that, almost totally clean, so it won't be hard to wash later. And if you've noticed, I keep a little bucket of hot soapy water all the time. I use hot water, a little bit of bleach, a cat full of bleach, and that way it helps to kill germs as well as keep the dishes clean and free of the grease and stuff. Now, one of my uh, granddaughters said, Granny, do you have that soapy bucket all the time? And I said, yes, I do. Throughout the day when I'm cooking, whatever. And if it gets a little cold, I just get some fresh, hot, soapy water. So it really, 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 I don't have a dishwasher. I have had some through the years, living in other places. But I really prefer not to have one because it's, easier just to keep things clean as you go along so anyway i just that's just my way i'm the old tiny way so dishwashers are wonderful especially for those that work outside of the home inside the home is lots of work of course so let's check this roast and see if it's starting to brown it is starting to but it's not quite brown enough then we're going to turn it over and brown the other side. You can put your view here. Now, when the roast is brown on both sides, we're going to put it in this pan. We're going to pour off the oil into a little metal bowl so it doesn't melt the bowl. And then we're going to put the roast back in the pan. We're going to let that finish cooking. And it's already smelling wonderful. I wish you could smell it. If your grease tends to get a little bit too hot, you can always turn it down. But this is doing pretty good, so I'm going to let it stay there. Now, usually with roasts, they tend to shrink a little bit after they're cooked. So this roast here looks like it fills the whole pan, and it pretty much does. But it's going to be a little bit smaller after it's cooked. So don't worry, you've got plenty of room to put your carrots, potatoes, make the gravy, everything like that. It's going to work out just great. As I was a young girl growing up, my mother would show me how to make the gravy and mix the flour and the water and then put it back in all together out of this world. Delicious. I can't wait for you to try. And I'm sure that if you're already a cook, you've got lots of roast recipes and maybe this one will just be an extra one for you to try. And if you're a brand new cook, you're really going to like this roast. We're going to check it. And it's not going to be easy to pull up. Oh, perfect. It's a teensy bit brown, and that's okay. That's what you want because it's a little crunchy. It gives you a little bit of a, I hate to say a smoky flavor, but it kind of does. You want that little bit of a brown, even though to some people it may look like it's a little bit burnt, but it's really not. It's just the sugar and the salt and the pepper and the flour cooking really good. And as you can see, it's a little crunchy. 
And later when we add the water, it's going to soften up, but it's going to help make that gravy absolutely delicious. We're going to let that cook for a minute. And we're going to pause, and I will get right back with you. Okay, we're back, and the meat is just about ready to take out of the pan. We're going to be very, 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 very careful. Not get burned. Okay, we're going to set this off to the side for just a few minutes. See that beautiful piece of meat. Beautiful. Now we're going to pour this oil into the little metal bowl. Make sure your counter can handle the heat. Very, very careful. If you're a younger cook, please have a grown-up help you with this part. As you can see, there's some crunchies left in there. That's good. That's what you want. Okay. The burner is off right now, and I'm going to move this bowl over very carefully because it's really full, and I'm going to get the meat back in, and then we're going to put water into the roast. Okay. Come on, you big piece of beautiful meat. All right. Yay. It didn't fall and it didn't splash and didn't hurt anyone. Thank goodness. Okay. Now what we're going to do is put water to cover the meat. We're going to add the water to the pan. Now this is going to help flavor the water to make it into gravy. It also makes the roast more tender, and if it's cooked all night or all day, it just will melt in your mouth. Now I'm going to add, I have an onion already peeled, and in all of my cooking, I only use the yellow sweet onions. I like the flavor of the yellow sweet. It's not too bitter. It still has that good onion flavor to flavor your food, but it's not a bitter flavor. So we're going to put a peeled whole onion in that part right there. We are going to put the lid on and we're going to put this in the oven and let it cook all night or all day long. Thank you so much. I will be back with you after the roast is done. See you in a little bit.